Live on tape from Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, it's Prodigy Bowlers Tour, a series of unofficial, informal, and impromptu after-league challenge matches, all in an effort to simulate tournament competition in an open play environment. The mission of Prodigy Bowlers Tour is to celebrate junior bowling while we elevate junior bowlers. This is season one, episode 30. Let the fireworks begin. As we enter Independence Day weekend, and with the 4th of July just days away, on this Saturday, July 1st, we wrapped up the four-week Youth Bowlers Spare Clinic, where kids learned about angles and making slight adjustments with their feet on the approach to be able to convert spares. Most kids never practice spares, so for some, the very fact that they spent a few games these past four weeks shooting nothing but spares was a totally new experience, and one that I hope, as a coach, they continue to use in their practice sessions to keep improving their spare-making skills. Immediately after the conclusion of the spare clinic, we turned our attention to the final Prodigy Bowlers Tour show we'll be filming this summer at Brunswick Zone Roswell. While there may be some unplanned Prodigy shorts shot at our home center, the plan is to take the rest of the summer off, except for perhaps a few road show episodes where we take Prodigy to some other centers in the area. We'll be back this September when the fall league kicks in, but after today's show, we have nothing else planned for the rest of the summer, except for a few random shows that might happen here and there. So we wanted this one to be special and a lot of fun. And the response was overwhelming. A record 31 participants shooed up for this week's qualifying round as the field was open to youth bowlers, their parents, coaches, and even a couple of prodigy fans who stopped in on their way from Michigan to Key West, Florida. Kids and adults all bowled two games of singles qualifying with the top five adults and top five junior bowlers advancing to the stepladder finals, where the players in the adult division and the youth division were paired up into doubles teams. The number one qualifiers were paired, the number two qualifiers were paired, and so forth. And now, today, you'll see the stepladder finals where they will bowl in a scotch doubles format, also sometimes referred to as alternate shot, where the players take turns throwing shots in their game. And on top of all of that, the entire competition is held as a nine-pin no-tap event on the house shot. In all, we had two 300 games bowled in qualifying, and we expect scores to be through the roof on our show today. There should be plenty of fireworks. So let's meet our teams who will be bowling today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. In the number five position is Rick Holbein. Rick is the father of Jake, who won last week's Prodigy Bowlers Tour event. Rick and his family traveled all the way from Augusta, Georgia to bowl in Prodigy today. He's paired with the number five youth bowler who just snuck into the championship round, Mark. Mark bowls out of Junction Lanes in Noonan, Georgia, about 60 miles from us. He came to bowl Prodigy last week, too, but failed to make the show. Today, he grabbed the last position and hopes to make the most of it. That team will face our number four team, starting with Danny Godfrey. Danny is the father of Melinda, who you haven't met on Prodigy, but who came all the way from Henry County, Georgia, just to bowl in our junior bowling spare clinic this summer. Danny bowled one of the two 300 games posted in qualifying. He's teamed up with Prodigy regular Christian, who will be trying to capture his fourth Prodigy title today. The winner of that first match will advance to face our number three ranked pairing of adult player Darren Vance out of Dalton, Georgia. Dalton is about 75 miles from Atlanta on the way to Chattanooga. Darren's junior bowling partner is one of Prodigy's winningest players, Logan. Logan is looking to snap a winless streak that dates all the way back to the end of January. 
The winner of that match will face our number two ranked pairing, starting with Jeff Collins. Jeff's son Joshua has made a few appearances on Prodigy. Jeff is actively involved in his son's youth bowling activities. He's a USA bowling coach and helps run the youth bowling program with his wife at the Fort Benning Bowling Center in South Georgia. Jeff and Darren actually tied for the number two position among the adults, but Jeff won a roll-off, which went to the second frame. Their two-game total of 530 was the second highest qualifying score posted. Jeff's youth partner is last week's Prodigy Bowlers Tour winner, Jake. Jake and his dad both made the stepladder today, but they could end up bowling against one another in this unique format if his dad can advance to the semifinal match. The winner of that semifinal match will bowl for the title against our tournament leaders, the team of Josh and Josh. Josh Rondino, a.k.a. Panda, appeared on our show in the Prodigy Team Showdown a couple of weeks ago and would be the first to admit he didn't have his best day that afternoon. But he came prepared to avenge that loss today. Prior to starting his adult bowling career at the ripe old age of 19, Panda was widely regarded as the number one youth bowler in the state of Georgia. He bowled one of the two 300s shot in our qualifying round today. He's paired with another Josh, the son of Jeff, who you just met as part of the number two team. So there's another possible father and son matchup that could happen. Josh's 521 total for two games was just two pins higher than Jake's. But he's already shot 290 on Prodigy without resorting to nine pin no tap. So clearly Josh is not afraid to put up some big numbers. And that's our field today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Again, they're bowling scotch doubles, which means the two players on each team will take turns throwing shots in the match. And we're bowling nine pin no tap, which means you get credited for a strike even if you only knock down nine pins on the first ball. So you should expect to see some pretty high scores all day today. We saw pretty high scores all throughout qualifying as well. Well, the number four team of Danny and Christian had the uh, choice of starting lanes, and Christian is going to lead us off. And how about a ripper to start? He rips the rack, sending that five pin over into the seven. Watch this. He'll hit in that half pocket area. And that five pin will head over, and man, there's about three or four pins there that took out the seven. And now, Rick Holbein up on the right. Big loft. And I'll take that ripper of yours and raise you a light shaker. How about this one? Watch the head pin go to the wall. Kicks the four into the two, which takes out the five. And he says, safe. All right, here's Mark making his first appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. And he comes up in that half pocket and gets the five to fall to the right. I'm not sure exactly how he did that. But it's a strike nonetheless. And we're going to see a lot of those today. The house shot is pretty easy here. It's Kegel's Stone Street pattern. About a 10 to 1 ratio with a big buildup from 10 to 10. Here's Danny. Well, how about this? Well, that is a fully certified, bona fide bucket crumbler. He has the 2, 4, 5, 8, and they all go down from behind. How about that one? And he loved that one. I would too. All right, nothing but strikes so far. Christian up on the left. Comes up a little light, leaves the two, but that's good enough in nine pin no tap. And you'll notice on our score sheet, we notate the no tap strikes a little differently. You see the NT there next to the X. 
And now Rick Holbein once again up on the right lane. Catches a wall shot. The seven won't go, but that's good enough for a no-tap strike. Some people ask me, what does no-tap mean? I guess they're not familiar with the term, but sometimes in bowling, if you hit it right in the pocket and you leave a pin standing, you're sometimes said to have a tap or you were tapped. There won't be any of that today. As Mark's first ball heads left and our first non-strike of the show today, and he leaves the one three. Should be a fairly routine spare for his partner, Rick. Just throw it at the pocket. He seems pretty zeroed in on that spot. No problem. I bowled my qualifying with Rick and watched him shoot that 273 that he had in qualifying, and it was a thing of beauty. A little short count on the last ball is what caused the funny number. Danny trying to keep his team perfect so far. Oh, and almost a pocket 7-10, but that 7 goes out late. He can't believe it, but he'll take it. Christian once again on the left side. He's perfect so far. And that's another perfect strike. Take another look at McFluffy's shot here. Playing just inside the third arrow. And stuffs him. That's 10 back. That's as good as you can throw it right there. All right, Mark on the right side. And that's enough to get nine and a no-tap strike. Let's take another look here at Mark's style and uh, the coach's clicker. We'll stop it right here and show you that what I would want to do with Mark is work on getting his right elbow in a little tighter so we can get that ball closer to his ankle. Rick comes up light, leaves the bucket. Well, he broke down the bucket earlier. And he leaves a difficult spare for his partner, Mark. You get that ball a little closer to the ankle, you've got a lot more leverage and more power. He'll learn. Crosses over, but still gets the spare. And that keeps his team in the match. One thing about nine pin no tap, especially when you have high caliber talent, you better not have any opens. And even spares can cost you. If the players you're playing against are making nothing but strikes, and there's another one for Danny. Good player. First time we've seen him, his daughter Melinda came to our spare clinic this summer. Pretty obvious where she got her interest in bowling. And this time Christian pulls it a little bit, comes up high and leaves his partner a split. And the thing about scotch doubles is, especially in nine pin no tap, you get into such a rhythm throwing strike after strike that when your partner leaves you something, you're not used to shooting spares. Let's see what he can do with this. Gets too much three pin and they have an open frame in the seventh. And that big lead shrinks down to 18. Fortunately for them, the team of Rick Holbein and Mark 
aren't working on a strike. But Rick would love to put one up right here. And he does. He steamrolled those pins that time. So now it's on Mark to try to come up with a double and cut that lead down to eight pins. This is the most important ball of a match so far. Oh, and he pulled it again. And he has left his partner with a rather tricky spare. Again, you shoot it just like a strike, but there are all kinds of ways to miss the one, three, six, ten. And a right-hander would rarely shoot at this. Oh, but that is well done. I'll bet Rick has not shot that spare since he was probably a junior bowler. All right, Christian, for the first time this match up on the right lane. Comes up a little light, but he shakes them around. Gets them all to go. And now Danny having a little word with Christian about the two lanes and the differences between them that he sees. That's the sign of a good team working together, sharing information. the rack sends that five pin over into the seven powerful ball and there's a double to extend their lead to 28 pins so now Mark really needs a strike to set up his partner Rick in the tenth gets it wide will it make the climb back not quite he leaves the two four five Loses three pins in count, so now they're down 31. And now we have to start doing math. Let's see, if they cover this and strike out, they can shoot 225. It's still possible, but a pretty heavy lift. So with Rick covering the spare, Mark will lead off in the 10th frame. Danny and Christian are sitting at 206 right now if they foul twice in the 10th. Got to have it. That's enough. That is a nine pin strike for the team of Rick and Mark. And you see, when we get to the 10th frame, we just put the N up in the little box. And Rick nudges out the 10 just enough to get a no-tap strike. So they're going to be in the 220s unless disaster happens here. So they have a chance. It's a remote one, but it's a chance nonetheless. And Mark throws a good one right there in the fill ball to get nine more and another no tap strike. So it comes down to this. Christian needs, let's see, he needs good count for starters. And depending on the count, he may need a mark. Let's see what he gets. Well, that's pretty good count. That's a winner right there. McFluffy has bowled well this game. He had the one ball that went through the nose, leaving the split. Other than that, he's been right on point all game. This is about as well as I've seen him bowl in a while. Funny how knowing you only need nine on the first ball can kind of loosen you up a little bit.
Oh, that one doesn't quite get up, and he leaves the 2.8. I was just about to say they have a possible 2.66, but now that drops down to a 2.54 if Christian can cover the spare here. A little confusion with the players not knowing if they're supposed to continue alternating shots on in the 10th, and the answer to that question is yes, you are. That's how you cover the 2-8. And so Danny Godfrey and Christian take care of Rick Holbein and Mark. And Danny and Christian will move on. They've got Darren and Logan coming up in the next match. You're seeing the world's top pros in action. Carmen Salvino. Les Schistler. Ray Blue, Bob Strappy, Johnny Gunther, and Don Carter, Mr. Bowling himself. All these men bowl for a living, where a single pin can mean thousands of dollars. That's why they all rely on the big ball that was built for the pros, the Don Carter Gyro Balance Ball by Ebonite. This scientifically designed Y is what makes all the difference. It shows exactly where to drill your gyro balance ball to groove your natural hook and put the power where the pins are. The only ball that's gyro balanced to fit your own delivery style. Ebonite's famous gyro balance, the big ball that gives you the Ebonite edge. To bowl like a pro, see your Ebonite Pro Shop dealer. He'll precision drill a gyro ball that's exactly right for you. Put your power where the pins are. You know, a 225 game would win most matches on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, but in 9-pin no-tap against this caliber of competition, I have a feeling we won't be seeing many 220 games advance on today's show. Indeed, in our first game, it was a 254 by Danny Godfrey and Christian that won over Rick Holbein and Mark. And that brings up our number three seeds, Darren Vance and Logan, as we climb the stepladder and begin match two. And once again, the higher seed, Darren Vance and Logan, they have the choice of starting lanes. And they have decided to let the team of Danny and Christian lead off. Pretty common for teams to want to choose to finish first. You see the pros take that choice a lot. What is Christian doing? We're always starting on the left lane. I think he's confused because the arrows are backwards on the overhead scoring, so he's got to change that. So a momentary delay while we get things all squared away, and now Christian will start the match just as he did the last match. His tempo looks great today. He's going nice and slow. He's lowered that backswing. He's not pulling the ball down from the top of the swing. This is all the stuff that he and I have worked on for months now. It's starting to pay off. And now, our first look at Logan. Comes up a little light, but he gets a shaker, everything but the seven, and that's enough in no tap. Nine pins equals a strike, so they're off and running. And now our first look on Prodigy Bowler's Tour at Darren Vance. He bowls out of Dalton, Georgia, a little town well north of Atlanta on the way to Chattanooga. It's where all the carpeting is sold. Looks like they do some bowling up there too. And he starts with a powerful strike in the first frame. Good looking lefty, I like his game. And now Danny. Back up on the right. Simple game, very repeatable. And he gets a light shaker to go. Oh. 
So Danny and Christian clearly lined up and on a roll now. Oh, even when he gets it to go a little bit wide, it comes storming back. That almost chopped the five off the nine. Watch the ball tear through the pins, and he nearly took the five off the nine, but just ticked the nine pin. Logan. A solid strike. One of our out-of-town visitors today, Chad Conklin from Michigan, who came down with his girlfriend, Rachel Klein, and they bowled in qualifying. Chad uh, teaching a children's culinary clinic in Florida this week, was on his way through town and stopped. He marveled at how small Logan is in person. Oh, now there is a light shaker, if ever I've seen one. That is the veritable tossed salad strike. Watch the head pin go to the right wall and takes out the whole right side of the rack. How about that? And that keeps him perfect through four frames. Out of the seven strikes so far, six of them have been naturals. Only one no-tap strike. Oh, and that one gets a little wide. And Danny leaves Christian a tricky little spare, the 2-4-8. Be more difficult if the five pin were up. Just shoot this like the 2-8. The ball should take out the four. That's perfect. Christian bowling well today. You see some players on the pair to our right. Those are either kids that are warming up for the upcoming matches or some of them just stayed after the qualifying to bowl with their friends. You saw Bryant over there in the orange shirt. He didn't make the stepladder finals, but we'll see him again, I'm sure. Boy, there's a solid one. Danny makes up for that wide shot in the fourth. And now Logan up on the right lane. Logan usually clad in his Denver Broncos orange, but I guess now he's just rooting for the Mannings. And he gets a wall shot to extend the string to five in a row. As he accepts high fives all the way around. And now Darren Vance collecting himself before he gets up on the left. Try to make it six straight. Look at this, a powerful strike. And they're halfway there to a perfect game. When you're in this situation, you've just got to keep throwing strikes. And in nine pin, no tap, that's good enough. Solid ball. And a no-tap strike for the team of Danny Godfrey and Christian. Now, Danny back up on the left lane, trying to keep it alive. They know that if Darren or Logan were to fail to strike on any ball in this game, this match would get real close real quick. as long as they keep striking, and how about that strike right there? Another light one, and he rolls the two pin off of a, a wall shot, it appears. A 
messy, but man, it looks like 10 back on the score sheet, don't it? And Logan rips the five over into the seven. It doesn't quite go, but that's good enough in no tap for a strike. We'll watch it again. Watch his reaction this time. He loved it. He says, we're okay. We're good. We're good. I should say so. They've started with the front seven. And that makes it eight. So there is really no miss area now for Danny and Christian. This puts the squeeze on him. Christian up in the eighth frame. Can't afford a non-strike now. And in no tap, that's good enough. Close enough in government work and no tap, as they say. Who says that? I've never heard anyone say that. Well, I said it. All right. Danny Godfrey moves over to the left lane. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. And he gets it. So the best they can do is 277. If Darren and Logan strike on the next two balls, they'll win the match. Logan running them out. Slaps out the 10. Watch this. He starts to run it out left. So this strike is for the match, barring any crazy stuff the last couple of balls. And that's a no-tap strike. That puts them in the 280s, unless, of course, Logan does something silly. Now, we've seen one slip off his hand before on Prodigy when the thumb insert slipped, but I'm sure he's got that problem worked out now. No problem with that one. He plays it straight up the track area that time. Content with a nine count, because that's good enough. So now it comes down to one ball. And it's all in the hands of Darren Vance for the first ever 300 game on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Here it is. He did it! 300. That is our first 300 on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. And yes, it was no tap, I know. It's still pretty exciting. That one comes in light. It was already a no tap strike before the three pin fell, but he rolled it anyway. And here's his reaction, he loved it. And so did his partner. And I think even the uh, teams waiting in the wings like that one, Jake came over to give him a high five. Christian and Danny, eh, not so much. Two more strikes for them, and they're going to shoot 277 and lose. Well, that's exciting, whether it's no tap or regular bowling. Anytime you can see somebody go all the way, that's really something. Especially in this kind of a format where you're not throwing every ball. Boy, there's a good one. Danny just pounded the pocket that time. So one more time, Christian will finish up the match. This will be about the best I've seen him bowl and he's not gonna get very far today. It's gonna be a fourth place finish 
for Danny Godfrey and Christian. And Christian bowled his butt off today. So did Danny. That one not so great, but he still gets nine. That's a no-tap strike. And they finish with a 277 and lose. Here's the last ball of that 300. This is a natural strike. It goes out late. But Darren Vance and Logan are moving on to the semifinal match. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit ProdigyBowlersTour.com to see the selection. See the Ash Gray Celebrating Junior Bowling Elevating Junior Bowlers t-shirt. Or the Who Will Win the Coveted Trophy Pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, bowl me. There's a t-shirt that says, bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press. And all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. Well now, we haven't seen a match like that on Prodigy before. Our first ever 300 game on Prodigy Bowlers Tour is a 9-pin no-tap 300, bowled by the Scotch Doubles pairing of Darren Vance and Logan. And give props to Danny Godfrey and Christian, who didn't exactly lay down that game. They shot 277 and lost. Of the 24 strikes registered in that match, two-thirds of them were natural strikes. That's some great bowling. But now we turn to the semifinal match and welcome our number two seeds to the lanes, Jeff Collins from Fort Benning and young Jake from Augusta. It looks like they're gonna need to bring their A games if they wanna take down this red hot pairing of Darren Vance and Logan, who haven't yet failed to register a strike. So here we go, match number three. Jeff Collins, he knows all these junior bowlers pretty doggone well, having coached some of them in USA Bowling. And he's pretty locked in with the network of parents and junior bowlers that bowl the tournament circuit around the state of Georgia. Darren will lead us off. Little wide, he knew it when he let it go. Lost it at the bottom. And he leaves the three, five, six. A spare that I doubt if Logan has shot in the last couple of years. But he has no problem with it. And now our first look at Jeff Collins. Up on the right lane. Takes a very short four-step approach. Simple game, throws a bit of a spinner, comes up light and shakes them all out. Take another look at that one. We'll watch his reaction. 
He's urging it to climb. It does. He likes it. And that gets a big smile from him. Here's his partner, Jake, last week's winner. Ooh, that one comes up high, and he leaves the 6'10 for his partner. I got to pick that up, right? And Jeff is asking, I got to pick that up, right? Yes, you do. So he's got to go fetch his spare ball to shoot the 6'10. Going cross lane. Oh, what happened there? Looked like he hung up in the thumb hole a little bit, pulled it left. So there's an open frame. But I can promise you, Jeff will remain positive and he'll keep Jake positive. It doesn't take much to keep Jake positive. He's one of the happiest kids I know. Darren right back in the pocket after coming up light in the first frame and puts 10 back. Now Logan moving over to the left lane. He comes up light but breaks up the 2-4-5, gets the 4-5 off the wall. And that is a nine pin no tap strike. So they have a double to move out ahead by 24. And now Jake will try to get a string of strikes started. And that's how you start a string of strikes right there. You come in light and you rip the rack. Watch the five pin. It will shoot over toward the seven. That is the quintessential power strike right there. And now Jeff comes up high, but he trips the four nine. All he needed to do is trip the four for a no tap strike, but he went ahead and got the nine pin anyway, just for good measure. Watch this one. Watch the two pin go to the wall, and it just ticks the four over to the right, knocks it into the nine. That is a thing of beauty. And now Darren Vance back up on the right lane. His team working on a double. Comes up a little high, but that solid six pin is good enough. So now Logan up on the left. And he gets the six pin to lay into the 10 in that lazy fashion. We sometimes call that the love tap. He got some love from the six pin here. Watch the six fall off into the gutter and then it just leans into the 10. Thank you very much. Oh, into the nose. Jake breaks up the split. He's happy about it. And that is good enough. Nine equals strike in this game. So now Jeff up on the left lane will try to keep this string going. He got the string started. He would like to extend it here. And he does. So they've got five out of six strikes. Just that open frame staring at him in the second frame that's posing a problem right now. 
because this team of Darren Vance and Logan just seems almost unstoppable. That's wide again. And that gives an opening to Jeff and Jake. Regardless of what Logan does. Now the 3-6. Not an unusual spare for a right-hander, and he covers it easily. So now Darren will try his hand on the left lane once again. We know he likes that lane. That's where he threw the 12th strike in their 300 game last game. That is just stuffed. All right, Jake. See if you can make it five in a row for your team. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wide open. The 4 7 10. Let's watch his reaction. He's like, no, no, no. All right, well, Jeff will try to go for it. Got to get it over to the left of the four. That's not going to get there. Oh, he doesn't even get the seven. So eight out. And they fall 29 pins in arrears now, running out of frames. Well, Jake. Gets a powerful strike there in the eighth, but is it too little too late? Let's see what Logan can do here in the eighth frame. Oh, he started to run that one out. Chops the five off the nine, leaves the stone nine, but it's good enough for a no tap strike. And he'll take it. A little high. Six pin, almost the six eight. That could have made things a little more interesting if there'd been a split, but the eight went down, and it's just a double on the score sheet now. And that extends their lead to 49 pins, and the clock is ticking now on the team of Jeff and Jake. No room for anything but strikes now. And there's another one, solid in the hole. Save for the uh, one missed spare in the second frame, Jeff has bowled well this game. And there's a good one by Jake. So there's the first one of the tenth, and uh, again, a little confusion among the players. Jeff was urging Jake to finish it off, but Jeff has to throw the 11th frame here. The alternate shot continues into the 10th frame. Possible 229. I would put them mathematically in it, but The way Darren and Logan are bowling, it's hard to imagine them throwing it away at the end, but still got to go through the motions of finishing the game. All right, Jake, strike. We'll give you 229. And that's what it's going to be.
That is a 10 strike, 229. 10 strikes and two opens, that's the problem. And another one stuffed right in the hole. Logan with the strike in the tent, that puts him over the top and Darren, Vance, and Logan are gonna move on. It's just a question now of how much can they get this game? Possible 268. Nope. Through the nose. And the 247. Now, this is a spare. A right hander will very rarely see. Not terribly difficult for a right hander, though. As Logan covers it easily, and that is a 245 to 229 victory. Darren Vance and Logan defeat Jeff Collins and Jake in the semifinal match. Darren and Logan will be moving on. They'll face Josh and Josh next. In the afternoon, when things slow down, when you're wondering what to do. Let's go! Go bowling! Nothing brings people together or makes friends so fast as bowling. So call a friend. Bowl Brunswick tomorrow. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the show, it seemed unlikely that games in the 220s would get you very far the way the scoring was going today. And once again, we found that to be the case as the doubles pairing of Darren Vance and Logan dispensed with Jeff Collins and Jake by a final score of 245 to 229. And that brings up our tournament leaders, the team of Josh and Josh for all the bragging rights in our first ever nine pin no tap event on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. These two lit it up in qualifying, but can they stay with Darren Vance and Logan? We're about to find out. News from around the world, across the nation, and up your alley. This is Prodigy Breaking News. This is Randall W. Pinfall in the Prodigy Bowlers Tour newsroom with a breaking news story we're just hearing about. Dateline, Richmond, Virginia, where Prodigy Bowlers Tour's winningest player and the recipient of the inaugural coveted trophy pin, Charlie Bostick is preparing today for the upcoming Teen Masters Tournament, which gets underway Monday, July 3rd. But today, Charlie is bowling in a Scotch Doubles Tournament as we speak at AMF Hanover Lanes, and we have just received word that in the match that has just concluded, Charlie did the impossible. He and his partner were clinging to a narrow lead in their match when Charlie, bowling in the eighth frame, left a pocket 7-10 split. Then he stepped up with his teen master's bowling ball, bowling on short oil, and took dead aim at the 10 pin. He hit it square, and the ball chased the pin back to the curtain in the pit, where the pin ejected straight left into the left kickback and bounced out onto the lane to knock over the seven pin. That's right, Charlie made the 7-10 split in competition this afternoon in Richmond, Virginia. Then when he got up to bowl on his very next turn in the 10th frame, he struck out, nailing down a narrow four-pin victory for his Scotch doubles team. 
That 7-10 conversion proved crucial in preserving the win. Congratulations to Charlie on making the 7-10 split. And good luck this week at Teen Masters. We'll see you again when you get home. By the way, Charlie reports that about 30 people at Teen Masters, ranging from fellow youth bowlers to the bartender at the bowling center, have come up to him and said they recognized him from watching him on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Clear evidence that the viewership of our little show is rapidly growing and reaching all corners of the bowling world. And we thank all our viewers for that. And that's it from the Prodigy Bowlers Tour Breaking News Desk. We now return you to the bowling in the Adult Youth 9-Pin No-Tap Scotch Doubles event at Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia. Our coverage continues in progress. Couple of strikes to start the match, and now Joshua up in the third frame. And another solid one. Boy, they are throwing it well. Both of these teams just locked in. See Josh's ball hooks in there and they all find a path to the pit. All right, Logan up in the third. Oh, he pulled that one a little bit. It was left off his hand. And now he's left the 3-6-10. Well, this is similar for a left-hander. Logan had to shoot the 2-4-7 earlier. And that's a fairly easy spare for a right-hander. Now Darren will shoot the opposite spare. Pretty easy for a left-hander. He shouldn't have any problem with this. And doesn't. I shouldn't say it's an easy spare, but it is a relatively easy spare for a left-hander. Left-hander would almost never leave it. All right, Logan, a little high, trips out the nine pin and gets nine. That's good enough for a strike in nine pin, no tap. And now Josh Rondino, Panda, bowling so much better today than when he was here for the team challenge. Say good night, Pins. That guy can really zip it down the lane. Boy. Let's take a look at the uh, haircut. Josh recently got his uh, haircut, and he didn't believe it, but I had a fro once. Mine was more of a frizz than a fro, but... Man. These guys are just locked in from both sides of the lane. Josh and Josh. Well, Darren and Logan have got their hands full this game. Darren taking a little extra time. He's had most of his success today on the left lane. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, that three pin just flew up and around the 610. When you see that happen, usually the eight goes down and it's what we call the fast eight where the three pin flies around the 610, you leave the 610. It's a fast eight count. For a right hander, it's the two pin flying up and around the four and the seven. But this time the eight stays up and he's got a difficult split. It's fractionally easier for a right-hander, but no bargain. Logan will go for it. Close, but that's an open frame. And as we've talked about earlier, open frames in nine pin no tap are not good. They're not good anytime, but especially in nine pin no tap, and especially when you're bowling against the caliber of opponent that they have today. Well, there's no more room for mistakes now. Darren and Logan pretty much got to take it off the sheet. You must figure. And that's a good way to start. All right. Panda up on the right lane.
Uh, the pins just have no chance against that force. No chance at all. You're lucky you didn't get sucked in by the backdraft. Take another look at this one. They just all go back. Wow. All right, that's the front six. See if Joshua can add the seventh. Oh, a little double dribble action, but he gets a wall shot. He gets so low at the line, he actually got a little too low that time. And he knew it was trouble, but he's glad he got away with it. All right, Logan trying to keep him in the match, puts one right in the pocket, but the lead is 55, and take another look at this one. Watch this ball go right in the pocket. They just explode. That's as good as some of those strikes that we've seen by the other team today. These guys are all bowling well. There's another one. My goodness gracious. You can't throw it any better than these guys are throwing. This is just a clinic we're watching. And oh, by the way, out of all the strikes we've seen thrown this game, none of them so far have been no-tap strikes. These are all legitimate strikes. And that was another one by Josh Rondino. My goodness gracious. Watch this one. Straight back. Wow. All right, going for the front nine. Oh, he got a little more around that one. And so the 300 is out the window. And now Josh going for the two seven. Spare that a right-hander will eh, leave occasionally, but not very often, and he misses it. So that's an open frame in the ninth. But they had such a large lead that now it's still 41 pins. Logan finds the pocket, and he's got designs on making this a match at the end here. That cuts the lead to 31. Well, it's still possible. Take another look at that one. Every one of these has just been high flush. Let's see, 185, 215, 245 is their possible score. If they can take it off the sheet, that would force the Joshes to mark in the 10. There's nine, that's enough. That's our first no-tap strike of this match. I don't care if this is nine pin no tap or any other kind of bowling. We are seeing some great shot making. Logan just playing for the pocket on that hit. I don't think he was even caring whether it struck or not as long as he got nine. You can watch this one. He didn't really put a lot on it. Kind of played it straight up the oil line. And that's nine and that is enough. And that's a 245. So, if Josh and Josh were to open and get nine out, we'd have a tie. They need a mark to win the match. A strike or a spare? Oh, he gave it room, and he gets the strike, and that's it. They win. Josh Rondino and Joshua take the title.
And Panda gives his partner a big bear hug, a panda hug. As they take the win today. Oh my goodness, see you later, Pins. Shred City. I want to check those pins and see if they're all still in one piece. All right, one more ball. This will be a 266 if he can get them all. Well, we've seen a 277 lose today. We're going to see a 245 lose today. That's nine pin no tap for you. Josh gets that one way wide and look at how it comes storming back and that's a, a six count for a, a funny number at the end, 262. But that is quite enough, thank you very much. And Josh Rondino and Joshua win the adult junior nine pin no tap scotch doubles contest over Darren Vance and Logan on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. What a finish. Pros depend on their equipment to make the most of their bowling skill. That's why more professional bowlers use Robbie's gloves. The exclusive designs of Robbie's original automatic positioner, Robbie's Plus, and Robbie's Gladiator guarantee a strong wrist and arm position. The comfortable natural contours of Robbie's gloves improve aiming accuracy, assure a consistent release, and give you more rolling and mixing power. When consistency counts, count on Robbie's. Well, there you have it. Our first ever Prodigy Bowlers Tour 9-pin no-tap event is in the books. It was also our first ever adult youth scotch doubles event. And I'd say everybody seemed to have a good time, especially our winners, Josh and Josh. As for the runners up, well, 245 was enough to win the semifinal match, but it wasn't quite enough to overcome a 10 strike game by the Joshes. Oh, and all 10 of those strikes were naturals. We hope you enjoyed the show. This was our last regularly scheduled Prodigy Bowlers Tour telecast until fall leagues start up, right after Labor Day. There may be a couple of Prodigy Roadshow specials between now and then, but with most of the better junior bowlers off to Cleveland for junior gold in the next week or so, we'll likely not have much to show you until they get back. Oh, and keep your eyes and ears open for a Prodigy short every now and then as those can happen at any time. But as of right now, we have no more shows planned for the remainder of the summer. Remember, youth leagues for the fall at Brunswick Zone Roswell begin on Saturday, August 26th at 9.45 a.m. That's the last Saturday before Labor Day. We'll have our organizational meeting that day and get a feel for how many bowlers we'll have. Then the Roswell Varsity and Junior Varsity Leagues begin for the 2017-18 season two weeks hence on Saturday, September 9th at 9.45 a.m. That's the weekend after Labor Day. If your youth bowling league doesn't have this much fun, you need to get your bowl on with us. It's been a season to remember. Let's take one more look back at the 2016-17 bowling season on Prodigy Bowlers Tour.
What a shot! He's gonna try to make it interesting. Brandon's second ball in the 10th frame is as good as his first, another strike. Okay, so Brandon has now thrown eight balls in the 10th frame in his three games and he struck on every one of them. Nolan has not stayed after league and bowled in these competitions with these kids so far, so this is a pretty big deal to him. There's a winner. But I'll tell you what, he couldn't throw it any better as he goes to his knees. So it comes down to this. Charles needs a strike to win, nine to tie, eight's a loser. Logan can't watch. And he blows the rack. Can't throw it any better than that. Charlie leaves a big split. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh! Are you nervous? A little. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's just like practice. It yeah. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But it kind of does because you want to win. Yep. Makes a nice pass at this one. Here's Joseph in the second frame. And he gets a Brooklyn strike. Here's Will. He brings that one back all the way from Duluth. Here's Charlie trying to hope for a miracle here. Oh! Here is the fill ball. And he shreds the rack. And that is a 245 game. She has three. She needs one more. And that's how it's done. Right now, let's take a look at the footwork. Oh, yes. Fred Flintstone feet. Each week, our players compete for the right to put their name on the coveted trophy pin. Christian needs a mark to win. Anything less, it's Charlie's day. Oh, look out! He was talking all day about wanting to sign that pin. And there's a solid strike by Logan. It's the Battle of the Network Logans. Logan to take the lead. There it is. Anything less than a strike here, Logan M can get up and win. Week 10, Logan M must strike on the first ball and the second ball. And he needs nine on the third ball for a tie, all three strikes in the 10th to win by one. He must strike here. And he gets it. He must strike here or little Logan wins. A little high, four pin. This is the shutout ball. Oh, and that is it. Oh, and he trips the four. That's a 279. I think Hunter would be into this if he was bowling against a bunch of PBA pros. He loves it so much. There's one right in the pocket. How about all 10? And a little dab will do you. Let's get a look at this reaction. She's got a strike on this ball and the second ball to win. This must strike. Oh, and she doesn't get the trip on the six. Mikey is the winner. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. 
Well, you would think he would have made a little adjustment after he nearly left the 410 the last time up on the right lane. But look at this. He goes through the nose again. Now the 410 is really peeking at him and what tripped those out at the last minute? Congratulations to both of our champions. The two champions, the long and the short of it. He needs three pins and this is over. See ya. I think Christian is uh, gonna take a victory lap right here. Yep. This kid's upside is through the roof. One more for 290. One more time. Yeah! Come on, throw one more. One more. Show us you could. One more. One more for a Verapapa 300 on Paris. For one million dollars. Prodigy million dollar payouts are calculated based on a payout of one penny per year for 100 million years. Good luck collecting. Nine or a strike will end it. How about that one right there? For the first time ever, Prodigy takes the show on the road. Six kids from Brunswick Zone Roswell traveled to Brunswick Zone Austell, where they were met with 20 more kids at the host center, including two kids who came to visit from Stars and Strikes, bringing the field to a whopping 26, more than doubling the largest field we'd ever had. Why'd you pass Way to go. Way to represent Roswell, yeah, buddy. Man. This a chance to take the lead with a strike. And she puts that one right in the pocket. And for the first time this match, Kara moves out ahead. Oh! Oh, he had the four, seven, nine, ten standing there for just an instant. That could have been interesting, but as it is, that nine count puts Zion over the top, and he is our winner. You hold the distinction of being the first non-Roswell bowler to win. Kara and Hunter from Brunswick Zone Roswell, and Zion from the program at Brunswick Zone Austell. Zion and a proud mom, I take it. Kara up in the ninth, working on a double. This will be the shutout ball. That's exactly what it is. These two young bowlers will be facing off today in a three-game total pins match to decide who wins the coveted trophy pin for 2016-17. What is this? A freak occurrence when the, the thumb hole slipped. And now Charlie carries a wall shot. And that's a five bagger now. And all of a sudden, Logan, when he got up in the eighth frame, he was just trailing by nine. And now in just a couple of frames, the lead is 52. Good heavens. What a terrible break. If she gets a strike, Jawan will need to keep the ball on the lane. We've seen him throw some gutter balls this game. Ellie needs all of them right here. Oh, that's going to be eight, and it's not enough. And with that, Jawan wins the match. Even if he throws it in the gutter, he's got 148. So Jawan is advancing to the semifinal match. And now Logan, his match is still very much alive. 
And another messenger. That puts him in the 260s. Cameron is still in this match. Ooh, so here's the situation. If Cameron spares and strikes, he shoots 270 with his handicap. Logan must strike on this ball to get into the 270s. He'll need a couple of pins and count beyond that, but he's got to have this one. And he gets it! But it's little Rudy who's going to take first prize. <laughs> and goes high flush with his first ball in the 10. If he were to get nine out, in other words, if he left one standing here, he'd have 94 in the ninth, 103 in the 10th. He must make this spare to win. And he does! And the winner of the Covington Trophy pin this year is Charlie Austin. All season, Hunter is the boy of pride. No matter how he bowls, low or high, he has a good attitude. Not many bowlers in this world can do what he does. And I want to give this pin to Hunter. Oh. Now the lead is back to CJ. And he does what a champion does. He takes advantage of the break and puts a strike right on it. Watch this one. We've seen him throw a few of these today where they just all disappear. We had just bowled on this same pattern a few pairs of lanes down to the left and I had finally gotten lined up, but I had not thrown a practice ball on this lane. And perhaps I should have. Well, that's what you get when you throw a lousy shot like the one I threw. Stepping up in the ninth frame, this may be over soon. Working on a double with a 25 pin lead can extend it to 35 if he can get a strike here. What are the odds? Oh, they're pretty good when you put it there. Let's see, if he misses the nine pin, that would give him 153 in the ninth, 162 in the 10th. Coach Randy can get 162 with three strikes in the 10th, so if Charlie converts this nine pin, he's gonna win. So that's it. This is the first time we've been in this situation on Prodigy. Can he finish it off? Oh, no. Not a five. Now Riley, try to get the ball over to the left of the one pin, knock it into the 10. Just like that. And now Dakota for a big wide open split. And he converts it. And he likes it. Oh, and coming off that conversion of the 6 7 10, he blows the rack. And Joshua makes the washout. I am not believing some of these shots we're seeing by these kids today. Look at this. That's textbook right there. He needs six pins on this ball to become the first non-Roswell bowler to win here at our bowling center. He knows he's got it. He knows he's got it. As soon as it came off his hand, he knew he had it. And it's all in the hands of Darren Vance for the first ever 300 game on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Here it is. He did it! Strike or a spare? Oh, 
he gave it room and he gets the strike. And that's it. They win.